Hey, Steve here from B&H Photo. We're at NAB 2014, and I'm talking to Matt Frazier, the National Training Manager for Panasonic's Lumix cameras, and we're going to talk about the new Panasonic GH4. Yep. Matt, thanks for uh, spending some time with us. Hey, thanks for having us. We really appreciate being on your show. So, Go. yeah, this is the GH4. So, uh, uh, as well, probably a lot of people are already aware of out there, this is a 4K video recording device. Um, it can record its 4K video to the SD card internally. Uh, it'll be a uh, 422 8-bit, I'm sorry, 420 8-bit file when you record it to the inside of this camera. Uh, it also obviously does 1080p, um, and it can do 1080p up to 96 frames per second. So if people want to do slow-mo functions, it does brilliant slow-mo as well. Uh, camera has microphone jack, headphone jack, all the usual things you'd expect from a high level. And the, the sensor size? Yeah, so it's a micro four thirds sensor camera. So um, this would be a 2x crop factor when compared to a you know 35 millimeter equivalent camera like right. an Nikon D800 or something like that. Right. What I'm actually kind of excited because I have some Super C 16 lenses and a 4K. It's really close. Yeah, actually it's a little bit bigger, but not by much. So yeah, you'll be able to see those just fine. And that's one of the great things about the system is that aside from not having any mirrors, which means I can get the flange much closer really to the close. sensor, it also means that I can adapt a lot of different lenses. So if you want to use a P, if you want to use PL, PL adapters, mounts. I can throw a PL adapter on here and I can go ahead and do that. And it's and it has flexibility also with like uh, Nikon lenses. We can put a Metabones adapter on here with a speed booster. And the cool thing there is if I'm shooting an F2.8 lens, it buys me a full stop of light, so it actually performs like an F2.0 lens. Right. And then on top of that, it gives me a field of view that's almost identical to Super 35 films. So you end up with, a, in essence, a camera that behaves like a Super 35 sensor with a Metabones adapter. And now this camera right now, it's a lot smaller than it looks like because... Well, yeah, I have it seated on a little adapter here. So to get the best out of this camera, people are going to want to use the HDMI output and an external recorder because that gives me a 10-bit output at 422 color, which is obviously what all of you are going to want to do out there is take advantage of that higher, you know, wider grayscale of 1024. So in order to do that today, we need a device like this, the YAGH, because what the YAGH is going to do is it's gonna give me four SDI outputs on the side here. And that's because I need four in order to transfer quad HD into an external recorder like an Aja or AJA Keypro quad. So now I have the ability to take this uncompressed you know, data, throw it into a ProRes file, and I've got a very easy to work with 4K file that is a 10-bit 422 color code. Right, but it also adds audio capabilities. Absolutely, so right here, we have XLR in, so you have a channel one, channel two input. I've got analog level controls right here, so it makes it easy for me to make my adjustments. I've got phantom power on board. I even have a time code in as well, so I can use an external timing device to keep time in the camera for me. So even little things like we do two different variations of 4K. We're not just, you know, Right, you have the Ultra HD, and you also have the DCI, the 4096 by 2160, the cinema version. Right, at 24, at, at 24 frames per second for that. So. so we've got a camera here that's still camera, but shoots HD video, yeah. and then has several different, I've actually described it as two different cameras, because you've got your, your basic 4K shoot in the camera, and then if you're doing a more complex video production, with you need higher quality audio inputs and control, you've got it there. You've got it with the YAGH, which makes it a nice, convenient product to work with. Because if I'm out and I want to do regular shooting and I'm trying to be more you know, incognito, less conspicuous, all I do is take this off the YAGH and look at how small that camera is. It's really tiny. Yeah, and I can shoot this like an SLR and people think that I'm just taking pictures. They have no idea I'm shooting videos. So it, it makes for a very inconspicuous package for me to go ahead and shoot with. And you know, putting this on like a Defy or a Movi gimbal, you're going to save money on the cost of the gimbal because this is so much lighter that you don't have to go to the higher end. You don't end have the gimbal. higher end. You have the smaller gimbal. It's lighter. It's quicker. It's smaller easier. Smaller quadrocopter that you and use with it. And I can put almost any lens in existence on that guy. Yeah, as long as the lens doesn't need a flange back shorter than a 17 point, uh, shorter than 19.5 millimeter. So like the Fuji X glass and the, and the Sony NEX glass, that's not going to work here. But everything else is going to work. So I've seen guys actually modifying 
You know the old projectors that you used back in the days? Right. And they're taking projector lenses and modifying these to be used on these cameras to get a really interesting effect. So it's a really flexible camera system. It is probably the most flexible camera system for video and photography that you can possibly find. And, and don't forget, it is a, a brilliant photo camera. Brilliant too. photo camera. I mean, it's got its shutter speed. It's got. I know, 8,000 of a shutter speed. The shutter will last for over 200, up to 200,000 intervals. So it's a it's a professional grade photo camera. It just happens to be one of the best video cameras you can get at its price point. And there you have it. Matt, thanks for spending some time with us. I appreciate you, it. We appreciate it. And thanks for watching. I'm Steve from B&H Photo, NAB 2014.